Welcome to New Endings Radio. My name is Darren. I'm your host today. We have our co-host Stacy here. Hello. Stacy, our podcast has been going wild. Yeah. So if you folks are listening on the radio and you want to go back and listen to some other episodes or you just want to catch up or go and repeat one, you can always go. We're on just about every podcast yeah. website yeah. you can imagine. Absolutely. A- a- Apple and Amazon and Podbean, Pandora, S- Spotify here. A lot of people on there. Oh, yeah. They're all over the place. Yep. <laughs> so if you ever want to catch up on a show, you just go and uh, search for New Endings Radio yes. on any of those sites and it'll pop right up for you. Mm-hmm. And uh, you listen to that, and we'll be glad to have you on the podcast. And make sure you follow it when you go on yes. there. Hit the follow button. Hit that button. So we can get as many people on there as possible. The yes. more people that hear, the more good it'll do, folks. Yeah. All right. Well, we have uh, Mark from Arkansas on the line today, so let's uh, just get, get right to it. Okay. Well, welcome to the show, Mark. Hi, Mark. Thank you. Hi. That's Stacy, our Hi, co-host, Mark. if you haven't been listening. And uh, what we do on the show, Mark, is that we just try to go back and, and show people that they're not alone. We're going to hear a little bit about your story. There's a lot of people out there that are suffering from all kinds of hurts, habits, and hang-ups. And so we talk to people with all different kinds of issues so people know that uh, they just need to do something. Usually in somebody's life, they have some sort of a flip moment, you know, that's what I call it, mm-hmm. where you get to a point where you say, hey, look, I just can't do this anymore. And I need to change. Did you have anything like that in your life that happened? Yes, sir. I sure did. Uh, what was that? I met my wife, and she had three little boys that was being verbally and physically abused and intimidated. And mm. I realized me being on drugs and alcohol, if I wanted to be a part of their life, I needed to change something to show them that real men don't act like that. Oh. oh so okay. it was just time to grow up and be a man all of a sudden. Yep. Gotcha. Well, did you uh, grow up in an abusive home then? or? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, my father was physically and verbally abusive. My mother was a drug addict and an alcoholic, and she was abusive. And well, did you have any brothers or sisters? I had an older brother, and I had, I had, well, I have a half-brother that's older than me, and then I have okay. a little sister that is now deceased. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay, well, when you were growing up uh, with your brothers and sisters, you said you're your father was abusive. Was, was he drinking, you said, also? or Yeah, drinking, drugs. Uh, Everybody did, always, I mean, every, yeah, um, usually. Marijuana, oh. the way to heroin. Oh, oh boy. Okay. okay. So usually when people have some sort of a issue like that, the, you know, they're trying to use it to kill the pain and that type of thing. Was there something that your father experienced that uh, maybe made him act like that that you know of? or He got hooked on drugs when he was in Vietnam. Vietnam. Oh, okay. okay. So then he came back and when he came back from Vietnam, it just continued on and yes, sir. Okay. So it continued on and it got worse and worse and worse. All right. So he was physically abusive and verbally abusive when you were how old, how, did, how, how long do you remember that? Uh, I remember it all the way back to, I was right after my second birthday. Wow. Oh boy. Okay. So you have memories from way back then. Yeah, I remember him picking me up, slinging me into a wall, and my uncles and my grandfather had to get get between him and all this and that. When I was five years old, he broke my leg. When I was oh. three years old, he destroyed all our Christmas presents and all the food in the house. Yeah. Hmm. Did you grow up then with uh, in that household? Yes. Yes, ma'am, I did. All right. So until I, went, until I was eight years old, and I okay. went to live with my grandmother and my grandfather. And well, how'd that come about? My mother and him separated, and my mother moved out of town. He went and hunted her down for us, and she dropped the, me and my, my siblings off at my grandma and my grandfather's house. So she just dropped you off at the grandparents' house and left? Yep. Dropped us off like 300 yards from their house out there on the farm on the gravel road, turned around and left. Wow. So you just walked up to your grandparents' house and said, uh, We're here. Hey, here we are. Yeah. Yep. Wow. How about that? Did you ever see your mother again? When I was 13 years old, she showed back up with the law and her, her boyfriend that she had at the time. And she got me and my little sister back. My brother was already grown and gone. Mm-hmm. And uh, got us back. We went live with her in Texas. And she sat there and watched him molest me and my little sister. And I had to watch him molest my little sister. Oh, oh well. Let's let's back up a little bit then. It, it, when you got dropped off at your grandparents, what what happened there? You you showed up and you just... they asked me where my mother was. I said I don't know that that uh, that she told us that we we are to live here now because she didn't want nothing to do with us. Okay. How was your relationship with your grandparents? 
it was great. My grandfather, I, I was the first grandkid that uh, ever would even go up to my grandpa or anything like that. All the rest of them were scared of him. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. Okay. He wasn't abusive or anything, right? No, he was just seven foot four, about 380 pounds. All right. blooded Cherokee Indian. Oh, oh well, okay. Yeah, that'll do so it. a little intimidating, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So how did, how did that, uh, you're eight years old and... Uh, you're going to school, you're living with them, you know, how, give us an idea of what was going on. Well, there was a lot of bikers that would show up on weekends and this and that, you know, and they would drink, but they wouldn't get out of hand. They wouldn't do anything like that. That's where, you know, I went back to that going, okay, this is how you're supposed to act when you're drinking and all this and that and control it. But I never could control it, but they, uh, they were very respectful of my grandfather, my grandmother, all of them. I mean, hmm. A lot of people don't know this. My grandfather was a hell's angel. He was one of the first seven. Really? Wow. Okay. So was it? It was created to be a brotherhood for right. men to help other men out. And then people just took it and went different directions with it. Right, right. Okay. So at the time, were the hell's angels coming around then when you were small? The hell's angels, the, the mongrels, there wasn't no war between them. Uh, the banditos came around when the Sons of Silence was formed. They would come around. Uh, oh, just a lot of them. motorcycle ministry groups would nice. come around back then. All right. My grandfather once, sometimes twice a year, would throw a big old camp out, out there on the farming ranch, and we'd cook two or three pigs in the ground, slaughter a couple cows, cook it, you know, have a big old get together for everybody out there. Huh. How about that? Yeah. Okay, so you're in school, and uh, had grade school go, everything going okay there. When did you first start drinking? I've been drinking since before I even started school. I was When I was a baby, they used to put moonshine in my bottles oh. for me to go to sleep, to, to put me to sleep. Okay, okay, so that was when your mom and dad, they were both alcoholics, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, so how'd it go in grade school? Let's kind of break it down a little bit, because it sounds like there's a lot to talk about here. Right. Grade school was actually pretty good. I didn't get in a whole lot of trouble. Uh, my main biggest deal in school is I wanted to play on the third grade playground because they had swings in our little playground for kindergarten, first and second grade, just had a sandbox. So I got kept getting in trouble for going to the third grade playground. All right. All right. Sounds pretty innocent <laughs> at that point. <laughs> now, were you, uh, you get to high school, are you drinking in high school too? or? Yes, sir. Once I hit... I drank all the way through school on uh, elementary school on weekends. We'd have like crawfish balls or something like that. The family would all get together on Saturdays and there'd always be beer and whiskey and moonshine there. And they would give it to the kids, mm-hmm. everybody. Yeah. So you kind of grew up thinking it was normal. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So you're in high school. Yep. You were drinking in high school. Were you drinking at school or just after or what were you doing? No, uh, my grandfather always said, you can't have no alcohol until you get done with school. Oh, okay. That was his, his main rule. When what? you come got back home from school, if you wanted a beer, whiskey, or moonshine, then it was there, but no drinking off the property. Well, that, that's something. Yeah. Some sort of limits, at least. Okay. Right, right. So did you yeah. get in any trouble in high school? or? Yeah, uh, a lot of fights from basically trying to protect uh, other kids that was too timid to... Uh, defend herself or stop boys from defend, messing with them. Right. And the girls that was being harassed and beat up by the boys. Well, tell me, are you, Man. there's two different kinds of guys that like to fight. You're either a, a small, skinny, scrappy guy, or you're a big, intimidating <laughs> yep. guy. Which one are you? I'm 6'1", 160 pounds. Okay. So and I just hit 160 pounds after having oral surgeries. I was 120 to 140 pounds. Oh. So you're the scrappy one. But, <laughs> all right. Yeah. All right. Scrappy guy. There right. you go. <laughs> so you, yes, you, you brought it upon yourself to, to protect the people. That are, what were they, getting beat up? Yeah, they were getting beat up. The bullies would jump in the air, put their knees in people's back. They wow. would uh, take books and hit them in the head. They couple of well one, i know one for sure played on a football team he'd be in full gear pads helmet everything and run people down and football tackle them and just beat them up slam his helmet into Sound, their head yeah sounds like a rough high school yeah i mean it, it, there, there was four or five kids that were boys oh, okay it. so it's just a rough rough group of boys if you will yeah okay and then uh we're, so we, we tried to keep them under control from 
for the rest of the school. Right. Mm. And that kept getting me in trouble. And- yeah, yeah. Okay, Mark, well, we're going to take a short break here, and uh, when we come back, we'll hear uh, a little bit more about uh, how these high school days go. It doesn't sound too good at this point, but we'll find out more when we come back from the break. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Darren, your host for New Endings Radio. Here on New Endings Radio, we talk about all of life's hurts, habits, and hang-ups. Every week, we talk to real people with real struggles. We hear about what life experiences led them to reaching the breaking point and finally reaching out for help. We hear how they overcame denial and how Celebrate Recovery and their true higher power, Jesus Christ, helped them get their life back. Celebrate Recovery is not all about alcohol and drugs. There are many things in life that keep us held down. All of our hurts, habits, and hang-ups keep us from being the people we were meant to be. Celebrate Recovery helps us break those chains that keep us down and deal with our denial. For those of you on the fence that know you have an issue but think you're the only one, listen to how these people have the same feelings you do. Then get yourself over the fear to change. We can all change, but no one can make you change. You have to do it for yourself. No one else can do it for you. Okay, welcome back to New Endings Radio. We're talking to Mark from Arkansas today. Yes. He's had quite a story so far. So far. And we, we got up to about the high school days. It sounds like he's a little scrappy. <laughs> a little scrappy. And he's sticking up for the school. But, yeah, uh, yeah. But he's sticking, sticking up for those who are being bullied. That's right. So, Mark, tell me, did the uh, bullies ever get in trouble for any of this? Well, the one that played on the football team, he didn't because his daddy was the assistant principal. Oh, I see. Okay, it's one of those deals. Okay, I got yeah, it. Yeah, they got in trouble. Well, they ended up both getting in trouble when we had to go to court the last time me and him went at it. Wow. Oh, okay. Okay. So it turned into a police deal then. Yeah, yeah. He he had to leave the school. He was beating up my cousin, which is a female, and uh, jumped on her full full gear. And she was a cheerleader and drug her through the gravel, knocked her down in gravel, and tore up pretty good and oh. so i kind of flying did that ripped his helmet off and I, I i hate to say i did this but i lost control and i started slamming him head first into the brick ball wow oh, oh that's uh that's something yeah well yeah. he's protecting that, his cousin against a guy that was, that's f- full tackling that, her yeah. oh boy well, all why, right why do you suppose he was doing I, all that was he just looking for attention or is he just mad at everybody he had a major attitude problem. His daddy had a major attitude problem that th- they could do whatever they wanted to anybody else. Right. And it didn't matter what you said. Untouchable, okay. right? All right, I got you. Yep. 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 All right, so. He thought he was untouchable. Yeah. Well, so that you... day he left by ambulance and they, they called my grandfather and grandmother told him to come get me because I was being expelled. We had to go to court uh, and when we went to court, the officers that showed up there to make sure I left the school peacefully told him that when that guy got on the stretcher his face and his head looked like ground beef oh, oh boy. okay kind of overdid it yeah yeah, yeah. I, I lost control yeah yeah, that's not yeah. Good. well I, I'm assuming you survived high school since we're still talking to you so yes. uh, <laughs> you you graduated did you yes sir uh, uh what you when the judge asked me why I did it, and I told him, I said, it, it's an ongoing deal. They don't never get in trouble. Mm-hmm. The principal and assistant principal don't do them anything. It's whoever they're fighting. If they defend themselves, they get expelled. Well, if I'm going to be expelled, I'm going to be expelled for a reason, but he is not going to touch nobody again. All right. Mm-hmm. Hope he learned a lesson. Yeah, that his daddy got fired then. The school board was there, heard what was going on. His daddy got fired, got kicked out of the... Uh, education system couldn't do it and then his son had to go to alternative school after that mm-hmm. and he got seriously hurt but last time i heard when i talked to one of my cousins that because when i told the judge that he went to alternative school his son actually changed his life around and he is now a preacher well there wow. you go All about right. that? Well, that's a good part of the story then yeah what, yeah well what'd you do when you left high school i joined the marine corps so oh. you got out of high school and you went straight in Straight in the military. Oh, okay. So how how'd that go? I actually loved it. Oh, and, uh, good. How long I, were you I in? I enjoyed some, 12 years. I got nice. medically retired. Okay. okay. So you go into the military, you go to boot camp. Yes, sir. All I right. went to San Diego. Okay, San Diego, you go to boot camp. You get any alcohol or drugs in boot camp? Oh, yeah. Oh, they, they were everywhere, drinking and partying. We'd get leave, and we'd leave with all kind of drugs and Go get a hotel room and hit the bars up and bring back alcohol to the hotel. And yeah. 
See, the last guy that we had on here said that, man, it was really hard to get alcohol in boot camp. In boot camp, but then after that he did. So just depends maybe how, uh, what, creative you are. Well, I made buddy, are. buddy. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> we, we, we made buddy, buddy with, with some guys that was out of boot camp that would get it for us. Oh, there you I go. See. Okay, well, there's always a way if you want there's it. There's always a way if you want it. All right, so would you, yep. cons- would you consider alcohol being a problem at this point? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. It, it was a problem since I was in junior high. When I'd get out of school, I would always drink at least a 30-pack. Wow. Okay. Oh, okay. The, the equivalent to a 30-pack when I'd get out of school. Well, if they were putting moonshine in his bottle. Right. That's uh, not a good start. That's not a good start. <laughs> not a good, didn't have right. much of a hope at, at right, that point. Right, right. All right. Well, uh, so you get out of boot camp. What happened? Did you see any combat or what happened there? Uh, yeah, I served. I, I, I went and all over the world training and all that and i did come back and lost my late wife and daughter and then i two days later i got shipped over to iraq i did three tours in iraq and a tour in afghanistan well, well, let's medically back, retired let's back up just a little bit because you kind of or you said you lost your wife and, and child yeah yeah what, what happened there they they were we was going to her mom and stepdad's house to pick them up we were going from a daughter's birthday to disneyland i believe it's disneyland in orlando florida where she got to come up to a stop sign red light she stopped she had the green arrow to make her left turn she went to make a left turn a drunk driver hit her right on the driver's door side oh boy right in the, right right there at that b pillar right between the front door and the back door and it just crushed everything man. Mm. so you lost your wife and daughter in an yes, sir. That accident, wow. and you saw I'm it. Sorry, sorry about that. That's horrible. Yeah, yeah. Saw it happen. Uh, yeah, it, it it still affects me to. I guess so. A I degree guess. on a daily basis. Yeah. But, you know, I've learned to leave it in God's hand and not questioning no more. It's that questioning and questioning. Mm-hmm. questioning. Right, right. So you you were married right, right out of high school, and you got in the service, and you lose your wife and child in the accident, and then you have to go to war. Yes, sir. I didn't even get to bury my wife and daughter. Oh, oh boy. All right. So they ship you overseas. Where'd you go? I went to Iraq. Uh, to Iraq. When, 9, when 9-11 hit that night, I was the third man on the ground at the airport in Baghdad. Wow. Oh, boy. You are right in the thick of it. Yes, sir. All right. So what'd you do there? Did you have a specific job or? I was for shriek on. What'd you do with that? When we, when we landed, our job was to take the airport at all costs. No matter how many casualties or anything that was there, we had to take that airport in Baghdad. That was your mission. That was our mission. Yeah. So you went in guns a blazing, I guess, right? Yes, sir. All right. So yes, sir. Did you lose any friends? I lost one of my best friends that I went through all the way through school with. He got shot coming down and died in my arms oh, boy. there. And I, I lost my mentality and forgot yeah. about cover and. I just, anything that moved, I was shooting. Yeah, I can't imagine what a great, uh, you're dealing with such loss between your wife and child, and then you're in combat, and your best friend, and I'm assuming, and I guess I shouldn't, that you're you're drinking, and are you using any drugs, or how are you hiding that pain? Yes, That's ma'am, a- I, 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 was, I was on, uh, I was doing cocaine, pills, yeah. uppers and downers. Right. Uh, well, Somebody had a marijuana, I'd smoke that with them, if, you know, but I mean, I, I was doing a lot of drugs and a lot of alcohol. Yeah, you haven't had any time to deal with the grief that, that you've suffered. No, ma'am. Right. And, and, and the sad part is the military gave it to us. Yeah. Mm, how's that? You know, they said, okay, you just lost this mess. We need you over here, here, here. Take this to deal with it. So they give you and something give to, to deal with it and then send you somewhere else. Yep. Huh. How about that? Well... So, how long were you in Iraq? I did two tours in Iraq, came home. My father, my grandfather, and my grandmother picked me up at the airport. They were told I got killed over there, and they were coming to pick up my body. I stepped off the plane. Oh, my. Walked over to them, and I wasn't dead yet. Well, and how did that, go out wait a second, you. wait a second, Mark. How, <laughs> how did that happen? How did they think that you were dead? Well, my buddy put my grandmother and my grandfather and my aunt's phone number down. As his next to kin. So when he got shot and killed. Oh, okay. Yeah. They contacted them and said that. They contacted them that that I was dead because I was supposed to be the fifth man off the plane. And he was scared to go out that 
up there that early. He wanted me to go first, so we switched places. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, so I was so, the third man out the plane. He was the fifth, and he got shot. Wow. Now, that's a, a God thing for you. I right, right. Been, it's really. It could have been you. Yeah. But, and I can't imagine your grandparents. I, I can't imagine them at the to go pick you up. They're expecting a casket, and here you come walking. I can't even imagine that. Yeah, they freaked out. I said, no, no, ma'am. No, sir. It wasn't me. It was Jason that got killed. Wow. We, he, he wanted to switch places on, on, on exiting the plane. So we, I switched with him, and I hit the ground, looked up, and he's coming down bleeding, and I ran over to him, and he died in my arms. And they're like, well, where's his casket? Where's his body? I'm like, that I don't know. As far as I know, it's still in Baghdad. They got him on ice. Right. Hmm. Wow. Let's, well, stop, let's stop for one second. Some clicking going on or something. No, I'm just standing here in my bedroom. Oh, my, my dog's... Uh, Chewing on himself. Oh, okay. All right. All right. <laughs> my, my service dog. Okay. All right. You don't have to worry about it. I was just trying to get rid of that sound, but if no. it's the dog, then that's fine. Okay. Well, I I think this is probably a good time for us to take a break. What yeah, do you think? Probably. Okay. Let's take a break. We'll be right back uh, with Mark and his dog from Arkansas. <laughs> Hi, this is Darren, your host for New Endings Radio with our co-host, Stacy. Hello. On New Endings Radio, every week we interview a person that struggles just like you have. Right. We hear their stories of what mm-hmm. they've been through. It's always something that you can relate to or someone that you know can relate to. Right. And we just like to hear their story, how they grew up, what shaped their lives, and what put them in the predicament that they're in right now. Predicament. Right. How about that word? <laughs> it's a predicament. <laughs> yes. How about that? But in any case, we want you to join us every week here at New Endings Radio and find out how they recovered and how you can do the same. There's hope for everyone. You just have to do something. Right. Do something. Step out of denial and start your own story of hope. That's where most people end up. They just sit on the couch. They don't want to do anything or they're scared to do something Mm -hmm. and they just need a way out. Well, we're going to be here to show you that people can do it. Absolutely. So join us every week here on New Endings Radio. All right. Welcome back to New Endings Radio. We're talking to Mark from Arkansas today. Okay, Mark. So um, your grandparents pick you up, and uh, I guess they're happy to see you. <laughs> yeah, we so. go out to eat. <laughs> yeah. I'm home for four days. I was supposed to have been home for a month before I had to show up at any base. And then uh, on my fourth day, my third day, my aunt gets a phone call. It's from my commanding officer in Quantico, Virginia, where I was stationed, saying that the next day I need to be back in Lafayette, get on a plane. They had the plane ordered for me and everything else that I was going right back out there. In wow. mid-flight, I found out they flew me to Quantico, left Quantico, going back out there. I found out in the air I wouldn't go into Iraq. I was going to Afghanistan. You know, I was like, okay, I did my tour in Afghanistan. Found out that some Force Recon was pinned down in a gunfight over in Iraq and that they needed help. So I went over there and helped them and got dropped down right there in a, in a hot zone and help them fight their way out wow instead did another tour right there in in iraq and got orders i was coming home i wouldn't have had to see no more combat no more bases i was going to be over recruiting stations over Mm -hmm. a few states and i got shot in the right hip by a friendly fire so that medically retired me oh you got shot in the hip by what friendly fire friendly fire. i had a guy that was in the national guard 19 year old kid never held a gun or nothing in his life they made him a lieutenant because he had one year of college, and he's in a no firearm zone with a firearm. Pulled the clip out, forgot about the one in the tube. Oh. oh wow! He didn't know how to unload the gun, and it went off and it hit me. So uh, you get hit in the hip. Obviously, you had to go to the hospital. So how long? How long that whole thing? You rehab and all that. I went to. Uh, they, they got me to to the uh, hospital on base. They got me stable there. Flew me to Turkey. Redid my hip in Turkey. I was there for three months, and then they flew me home. Okay, so you get back and home. I had to learn. Go I had ahead. to learn how to walk all over again once I got back home, and all this and that. You, you know, we re- yeah. re- learn how to walk and. Well, you're do- you're in the hospital for three months. So, was there any drugs and alcohol going on then? Oh, there was a lot of drugs. They uh, kept me drugged up, liquid morphine, wow. liquid narco. Uh, 
Oxycontin 80s, wow. uh, all kind of painkillers. Uh, mm. So they didn't hold whatever back. Whatever I wanted, I got. Yeah, yeah, I bet. Yeah. How about that? So you get back to the uh, States and uh, you go to live with your grandparents then? I went and lived out there with my grandmother and my grandfather. I had my own, my own house out there on the property at that time. And uh, moonshine was about 100, between 100 and 110 yards out my front door. And it was free. All I had to do was bring my own containers to go get it. That does okay. not sound like a good situation for no. for what you're dealing with, right? <laughs> no, ma'am. Uh, I got up to where I was drinking four gallons of that a day. Four gallons? Alcohol port, four, a moonshine a day. Four gallons of moonshine a day. That's like a death wish. Yeah. Yeah. I had, I had alcohol poisoning four times. Mm. The last three times that they, they life flighted me off my off the farm and ranch. They, uh, the doctor said there's no reason why I should even be alive right now. What they pumped you... as much as they could out of my system. Right. But what was left in there was enough to kill 10 grown men. <laughs> well, let me ask you a question. You, you know that it's harming you, obviously. What made you keep going back and doing it? I couldn't get the war out of my head. Yeah. So I had a lot of anger from that, not being able to bury my Wife and wow. child didn't know where they were buried at, so I couldn't go say my goodbyes. Mm. Had a lot of anger in that. So you were just using the alcohol, basically, to just forget about everything. Forget about everything. I yeah. couldn't sleep until I just I had to get pass out drunk to fall asleep. And when, when I fall asleep from being passed out drunk, that was 20, 30 minutes of that. And then my brain would go right back to where I was at war on the front lines. Wow. Oh, boy. Well, Mark, we've run out of time, so we're going to have to hear the rest of your story next week. Uh, the good part's next week, I would assume. Yeah, so we right. wouldn't be talking Th- to that's Mark, right? right? right. Well, four <laughs> gallons of moonshine a day. I'm surprised we're talking to him at all. I am very truth. thankful we are, and, but, uh, and can't wait to hear the rest of the right. story. That's right. So all you folks listening on uh, the radio, you're going to have to listen to us next week now to hear the end of the story. Yep. All you podcasters that are listening... Uh, make sure you go back and listen to this episode before you listen to episode two, or you're not going to know what's going on. Right, right. So we'll see all you folks next week here on New Endings Radio. We like to end each week with the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, Taking, as Jesus did, the sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will, so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next.